and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Though a lot of us thought it was going to be a really anticipated movie, and I'm still anticipating it, it has the second worst critic score of the MCU. It's a little above Eternals, which is at 47%. What is the score at right now, Derek, as of filming this episode? 52%. So it's falling. Because um, when we checked earlier, it was at like 58%. So it's it's still falling. And that's a little concerning for me. Because when I saw this, I thought it would be the most... <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> You gotta warn me before you shit on fucking podcasts. <laughs> so we're leaving this in, right? What? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love Ant Man, but it's not looking too good. I mean, uh, I mean, that's not <laughs> that's not what you want to see, right? It's, and it's it's really just crashing and burning. It's at fifty two percent, y'all. That's got to be like one of the worst. Like that's it is one of the worst MCU scores, and that's shocking to me. Just because when I saw the trailer, I'm like, this looks good. Like to me, it actually looks like one of the better. Looked big, epic. Yeah. Looked like the stakes were really high, and they were saying that they wanted Paul Rudd to be kind of the face of the next phase, and, you know, they're introducing their next big baddie, really, in this film. Sure, we've seen a version of him in Loki, but we're really seeing who he is in this movie. So, I think the fact that this movie is kind of a letdown for critics makes me really nervous about it. it makes me kind of like, oh god, is Phase 5 going to be... Kind of like Phase 4, because Phase 4, don't get me wrong, was a good phase, but it was probably my least favorite phase of them all so far. For a far. lot of people, yeah. And um, so I'm just worried that Phase 5 is going to continue that trend, because I'm really wanting the MCU to pick back up and be epic again, because when you have, you know, good competition, like when Marvel elevates themselves, DC elevates themselves, and so I think it just makes the market better. So I'm hoping that it gets better in Phase 5. But what are you thinking about this? Because I'm just nervous. You know, I'm a big fan of the Ant-Man movies. And I, I think that's a little, sometimes, if depending on the circle you're in, unpopular to say. Some people really love Paul Rudd and Ant-Man as a character when he's interacting with other characters, but not so much of his independent movies. And that's totally okay. Whatever you think of those movies, I don't think they're top 10 MCU movies necessarily. But whenever I throw them on, I have a fucking awesome time. I love Paul Rudd. I love Michael Pena. I love the whole cast. And I think everybody was just, just nails it. Okay? And unlike a lot of other Marvel movies, I think the humor in those movies, for some reason, they just they, they hit the right bone for me. So seeing that this movie was going to go up in the scales, up the stakes maybe go with a little bit darker tone based on the trailers did not worry me at all. In fact, it made me excited because I was like, hey, kind of like Thor Ragnarok was to the first two Thor movies, it's going to take a drastic shift in tone. Just this is a different situation. It's going darker. And that made me really excited. And Kevin Feige came out and said, you know, it's about time... Scott Lang and the Ant-Man cast got the forefront and got to shine and start an MCU phase off. And at this point, they've earned it. And I agree with all of that. But at this point, I'm beginning to wonder if it was maybe a mistake. Introducing Kang the Conqueror, the big bad of your new MCU phase, uh, and what is it called? The multiverse saga. Right. Yeah. In an Ant-Man movie, which has, you know, been a heist movie has been very low kind of scale, low stakes. And that's kind of been the charm of those movies for me, at least. And I think of a lot of other people or a lot, at least a lot of other fans of those movies. 
And I think maybe, I haven't seen the film yet, but some of these critics might be just thinking, hey, it's a little too sci-fi, it's a little too big, it's a little too MCU, and it's not enough of that family-friendly Ant-Man that we got to know and love from the, the first two. I don't know if this is true or not, but I know some people are saying maybe that some of the magic is lost because the daughter's older now, so some of that chemistry is gone. But everything I've seen from the trailer, it looked like quite the opposite. I, I still thought the cast looked like they looked like they still hadn't missed a beat. Right, but they still got along. From right. some of these reviews that I've that I've read and some of the reviews we've listened to, it sounds like maybe some of the humor throughout the movie is a little misplaced or some of it gets a little schlocky. Obviously, we'll have our own review up here in the next week or so. And we'll make our own opinions known. But it does dampen my excitement a little bit. But at the same time, I'm still open-minded enough to go see it and make my own decision. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good way to look at it, is to go into it with expectations at the door, but to still be realistic and, you know, not expect the moon of this thing. Not let the trailer overinflate the expectations for it because otherwise and then you're just going to end up disappointed no matter what movie you see you know if you get really high expectations for any movie you're going to feel kind of crappy after you leave it i'm the only thing i'm worried about in this movie is it looks like there's a ton of cgi and when movies have a ton of cgi for me sometimes they can feel a little silly or um like i'm almost losing my grasp with it because it just doesn't have a grasp on reality for me sure. so i'm hoping that they can still make it feel real and make it feel grounded while still having all of the CGI and stuff going on. And I'm hoping that all the effects work looks great because I think with every heavy CGI film, you kind of go into it with a little bit of a squint, you know, like, hmm, yeah. is this going to be good or is this going to be mustache gate? We have no idea. And I thought the first two Ant-Man movies, which was also directed by Peyton Reed, the visual effects I thought were great. I thought the visual effects for the Quantum Realm and Avengers Endgame also looked really good. But like you said, this movie is going to rely heavily a lot more on visual effects. There's almost some Star Wars vibes as well. But every review I have heard has said that King the Conqueror, Jonathan Majors, absolutely nails it and is a great opening for him. And a lot of people are excited to see what's still to come but this is just kind of a stepping stone into what's to come later as opposed to a great trilogy, a great finale for the Ant-Man trilogy, which the Ant-Man movies, like I said, the first two, I'm huge big fans of. I was really hoping the third one was going to crush it and be the best out of the three, kind of like Thor Ragnarok was for the first two in some people's opinions. But... Going in a darker tone, ending the trilogy on more serious tone, kind of like maybe Spider-Man No Way Home is a better example. Right. I think that would have been a great way, not not to send off for Paul Rudd, but it would be a great way to finish that trilogy, a trilogy that we were honestly questioning if we were even going to get a third installment. They said before this film came out that there was talks about a fourth movie coming out, but depending on how much lower this critic score gets and the obviously the box office success of this film is obviously going to depend on whether or not we get a fourth movie. But hopefully this isn't the last time we see Paul Rudd as Ant-Man and hopefully this movie can make a uh, turnaround and hopefully audiences will have a little bit different opinion. But what do you guys think? Are you going to go see Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Are you going to make your own opinion? Or are the critics and the critics' score kind of turning you otherwise? Maybe you'll just wait to Disney+. Plus. Whatever you think, let us know down in the comments below as we always love to hear your thoughts.